Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to the Piper Report. So I want to do a quick video response to one of Styx's videos here. For the most part, he was accurate. There were a few things, though, that um, he said that were incorrect. So I want to go over it quickly because it is important that we actually understand exactly what's going on. And the first thing he said was, now this one he didn't say as a categorical fact. He just said he believes that we pay $200 billion a year on interest payments alone and of our debt. It's actually closer to $500 billion a year. In 2006, the interest payments were $406 billion a year. I believe this year it's projected around $470 billion a year. What's more is that our national debt has interest, and that interest is compounded, meaning that interest accumulates interest. <laughs> that is why the Federal Reserve is so dangerous. If you're wondering what this is, I did a video a while back 19 terrifying facts about the U.S. debt crisis, and here's a transcript for it. I didn't want to go over the video. I just figured I'd bring up the transcript so we can look at it. Another thing he mentioned was that the majority of our debt is owned by corporations, and although Apple does own $58 billion worth of shares of treasury bonds, the corporations do not actually own the majority of our debt. The majority of our debt is actually owned by the government itself. Then you have the Federal Reserve, and then you have the public. And here's a good, um, good web page. I'll put it in the description as well. And U.S. debt, 19.8 trillion. Most headlines, blah blah blah. Debt has two categories: U.S. Treasury matched the debt through the blah, blah blah. So here are the two categories that control the debt: in intra-governmental holdings. This is the portion of the federal debt owed to 230 other federal agencies. It totals 5.5 trillion, almost 30 percent of the debt. Why would the government owe money to itself? Some agencies, like the Social Security Trust Fund, take in more revenue from taxes than they need. Rather than stick this cash under a giant mattress, these agencies buy U.S. Treasuries with it. By owning Treasuries, they transfer their excess cash to the general fund, where it is spent. Of course, one day they will redeem their Treasury notes for cash. The federal government will either need to raise taxes or issue more debt to give the agencies the money they will need. This kind of also why I mentioned a while back, a few times actually, that Social Security is a losing enterprise. What we should do, we should end it. But you can't just not provide the money that people have been paying in their whole lives. So what I think you should do is grandfather everyone in who has paid into Social Security and then stop. So starting at this date, all babies born after this date will no longer pay into Social Security. And they will not get anything out of Social Security. That would help. Because Social Security is unsustainable. And in order to fund it, we're going to have to borrow more money to actually fund it, which is kind of what this is talking about. So this is kind of where all our debt is owned by government programs. But then you also have debt held by the public, which is about $14.4 trillion. Foreign governments, investors hold nearly half of it. One-fourth is held by other government entities, Federal Reserve, as well as state and local governments. 15% is held by mutual funds, private pensions, etc., etc. So there's kind of the breakdown like this. But... What else now? He also mentioned it too that the under the Bush tax cuts, revenue actually dropped. And this is kind of true and kind of false. Initially, revenue did in fact drop. However, it did increase then. And then it dropped again, but many people assume it dropped again due to more foreign involvement overseas. But after that, it actually went back up again, revenue. So one could argue that the Bush tax cuts actually increased revenue rather than decreased revenue. He said that Trump is paying down the deficit, and the deficit right now is around $680 billion. When Trump took office, it was around $600 billion, and he was actually decreasing it. However, that was primarily due to the Saudi Arabia arms deal of $200 billion, among other things, of course. But now it's actually going up. The deficit has actually gone up over $80 billion since Trump took office, and is actually continually continuing to rise. So... If we do institute tax cuts and we keep government spending the same, that deficit will continue to increase. It's actually not decreasing like Stick said. It's actually going up. And we can see this on the usdebtclock.org. You can see the deficit exactly. So that is why before you really should cut taxes, you should cut spending. And nowadays, most people don't want to cut spending at all. 
people want to keep on and keep on raising government spending and then tax cutting taxes will actually help the economy grow that is true however if you do not cut spending it doesn't matter how many taxes you cut it doesn't matter how far the economy grows because your national debt and deficit will continue to increase which devalues the dollar devaluing the dollar means your money is now worse inflation happens so it is important to get our debt and deficit under control but i will um I put the article or the yeah article and this video in the description. Be sure to check it out. I put Stick's video as well in it, but for the most part, like I said, his video was pretty accurate. He described the difference between the debt and deficit accurately, but some of the things he said were wrong and needed to be addressed. So that is what I have, and I'm done.